Okay, we're recording now. So what we're going to do today is we're going to um, read a poem called Border Bus by Juan Felipe Herrera and um, look at part of a poem called Ulysses. And um, the poem Border Bus, that's a recent poem. And I think you'll be able to tell from that because it's talking about a topic that we see in the news all the time. Ulysses is a much older poem. And I think you'll be able to tell when we look at that. Um, the language is a little older um, and it's talking about something that happened in ancient Greece. Um, so you'll you'll be able to see the difference. But I want you to keep in mind, it doesn't matter when the poem was written. We're practicing skills, okay? And so the skill that we're practicing today is looking at character development. And that skill is just the same as it was when we were looking at the short story. So we're still going to look at these things. We're going to look at the three aspects of character, which are emotional, physical, and physiological. Sorry, psychological. And we're going to look at the sources of characterization from steel. That's what the character says, thinks, their effect on others, their actions, and their looks. And you're going to think about that character's perspective, how that character sees the world. That's what you're going to try and look for. Okay. Okay. So let's start by watching the AP daily video, which I've assigned to you guys in AP classroom. And um, so you can watch it on your own if you want. We're going to watch it together now. And we're going to talk about um, how the poet develops character. So without further ado, I'm going to mute your, myself. You guys might want to turn up your sound. Hey everyone, I'm Brian Stabnick from Miller Place High School. We are starting unit two, which means we're dipping our toes into the poetry pool. I know you had some lessons from Mr. Escobar as well as myself from unit one. We're gonna see if we can transfer some of those skills. We're not leaving them behind, they're coming with us. And we're starting with characters within poetry. So there are a couple of things that I want you to learn from today's lesson. A lot of it's gonna be repeated from what you already learned in unit one. So in a way that's great because it's gonna reinforce it. But I also want to show you how the things that you learned in unit one can be applied to poems, specifically with characters. So Mr. Escobar, and I'm stealing this from him, he identified three ways to look at a character. And these aren't the only three ways, but I think they give you a well-rounded sense of who a person is in a poem or a short story or a novel or a play, but it's the physical, the emotional and the psychological traits. We're actually going to identify those three things in an excerpt from a poem. It is my number one poem of all time. I teach it on the very first day of AP. I've done it ever since I've taught the course. But it's not just about identifying those traits. I'm going to show you toward the back end of this video, once you identify them, how you can draw really good conclusions about those characters based on those traits. All right, so let's get started and see what this looks like. Speaking of what it looks like, this probably looks familiar. You probably saw this if you watched the unit one videos for Mr. Escobar. And the only reason why I'm showing is I wanna reinforce those three things, the physical, how a character looks, and not just how they look, but also the environment, the physical environment that they're in, I think can reveal things about them. Their emotions, their psychological needs and wants. The thing about these three traits is we all experience them. And what I love about this, it shows that we're multidimensional. No one likes to be just pigeonholed into one specific category as an athlete or a member of the band or in drama. We have so many dimensions to ourselves and in great literature, those are always the best characters, the ones that have so many dimensions to themselves. So here's the poem, it's Ulysses. It's by Alfred Lord Tennyson. This is only 17 lines from a much larger poem. That's why I have excerpt up there, but I wanna give you a read I wanna pause, give you some instructions about what you can do with these lines, and then allow you to work through some annotations. Here we go. There lies the port. The vessel puffs her sail. There gloom the dark broad seas. My mariners, souls that have toiled and wrought and thought with me, 
that ever with a frolic welcome took the thunder and the sunshine and opposed free hearts, free foreheads. You and I are old. Old age hath yet his honor and his toil. Death closes all, but something ere the end. Some work of noble note may yet be done, not on becoming men that strove with gods. The lights begin to twinkle from the rocks. The long day wanes. The slow moon climbs. The deep moans round with many voices. Come, my friends, tis not too late to seek a newer world. Push off and sitting well in order, smite the sounding furrows for my purpose holds to sail beyond the sunset and the baths of all the Western stars until I die. All right, I'm gonna pause and here's what I want you to do. I want you to look back at these lines and we have a character here and we have some things that indicate who this character is. I want you to take some notes. How can we identify this person? We don't have a name, but I think we have a pretty good sense of what type of person he is. So I'll pause, you take some notes, and I'll see you on the other side in about a few seconds. Okay. So take a minute and look at the poem and try and pull out some information about the character because there is a character there, okay? What can you tell me about that character? What does that character say or think or do? And then I want you guys to drop it in the chat, all right? I'm looking for at least three things you notice about this character, what you can tell me about the character, okay? Once I have that, we'll move on. Um, yes, that way your classmates can see it, please. What can you tell me about our character? It's a she. It's a she? It's a ship. Is that what you said? Not that she. It's a she. It's a, it's a girl? Yeah. Okay, so what is telling you that? Her. Her. I'll put the okay. Show me where you're getting her. Where are you? You're not a Oh. Yeah, she is. She is. She is. For a okay, so then keep reading. You can definitely put that in the chat, Taylor. Okay, where did you get that from? It says, uh, three parts, three parts, and then you and I are old, old age has it. It's on there. Yeah. For sure. Did you put that in the chat? Yeah. All right. That's actually not right. What do you think? I was going to say old. Good. Yes. That is true. You can put agree if you want. <laughs> She's sad. He's old or she's old. Aaliyah says, so Leah Allen says they're old. Valerie is concurring with that. He's a sailor who's searching for something. Is she sad? Um, Aaliyah Chandler, what words tell you sad? What words give you that impression? I'm going to say that right. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yes. Looks like he's willing to die to try and find what he's looking for. It could be. There's definitely a boat there. Favor agrees. Okay. You guys are doing great. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, uh, Leah, I think there is. I, I don't know about sad, Aaliyah Chandler, but I definitely see some things in there that are darker. Death closes all around. There's the end, there's toil, 
you know, those aren't, those aren't super positive words. So um, I see that. Absolutely, Joaquin, tenacious. I think you see that. All right, we're going to go back to the video and you'll see what Mr. Um, Stadler pulls out about this. Okay, so I'm going to mute myself. All right, hopefully you have some notes in front of you. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color code my notes so you can see how I would work through this in my classroom or just as a reader, because we read beyond the classroom, I hope. The first thing I noticed is the word port. Now it's not a physical description of the character, but port, sail, seas. It's give me that physical situation, that physical atmosphere in which this character is placed. And as I move through it, then I get some more indications that show not only his location, but what type of person he is. He has mariners. He has souls that have toiled. They've worked really hard. They've wrought. They've thought. So I'm getting the sense that there's a bond between these guys. But as we move about five lines down, and I think that dash there indicates an important, maybe even like a dramatic pause. He acknowledges, you and I are old. And he starts to talk a little bit about age and death. But as we move toward the bottom, and here's where I'm gonna to move to some green, I think there's this wonderful, great invitation that happens in this poem. He says, come my friends. And then he kind of lays out where he wants to go and what he wants to do. He says something about he wants to seek a newer world. He talks about his purpose, that he's gonna sail beyond the sunset, which doesn't even seem to make sense, but I think I get what he's saying. So if I look back at my annotations, all the things in red at the beginning just give me a really good sense that this person is somehow connected to things nautical, the port, the sail, the seas. And then as I move towards my purple annotations, it's reinforced, but here's where I start to get a little bit more of an identification of who this person is. He's not just a sailor, he's a captain, because it seems that he's in charge of these men. And what I love about this guy is it's not that he's in charge, like I'm your superior, you have to listen to me. There's this connection and it's a bond that has transpired through time, but also through like adventure and effort and work. And as I mentioned with the blue, the thing that strikes me about the you and I are old is that it's in a way, Frank, it's truthful. He's acknowledging the fact that he's getting old and he realizes that death is closing in on him. But he also understands, and this is that line in the middle, that old age has some work to it, as well as some honor. And I think that transitions nicely into the last part of it, because I think part of that work and that honor is to still go out and seek new adventures. But he wants to see if he can push the limits of his horizon. And I think that's that whole line about sail beyond the sunset. He's going to see what's out there, maybe like what's been unexplored. Now, one of the reasons why I love this poem so, so much is I teach it on the first day, like I said earlier, and I make this connection between this character specifically and every senior that I teach starting their senior year. Because in a way, seniors are the old people in a high school. They've been around for a while and they've had some times where they've had adventures and they've worked and they've wrought and they've thought. But as they're getting close to the end of their high school experience, they realize that it is the end. And what I love about this poem is that that invitation at the bottom. He's not just going to get old and wait for death to close in on him. He wants to go out and seek more adventure and see what's out there and test the limits of his horizon. So it's a great way to think about a senior year. So as we come to the close of this video, I want you to take away a few things. Number one is that transferability. So the skill of identifying a character that you did in the short story unit in unit one is going to be similar, if not the same, in poetry. We're looking for dimensions to characters. We want to see that these are real people just like us, because those are always the best characters. And we see here in a poem written centuries ago about a guy that's a sailor, it may seem like that you probably have nothing in common with him. But in a lot of ways, he's just like us. And that's what I love about literature is when we can identify with characters and maybe see even a better version of ourselves. All right, so as we close out this video, I want you to think about characters in three ways. The physical, how they appear. The emotional, how they feel. The psychological, what they value and want. And I thank you for joining me. 
And as always, be well, my friends. Okay, hi guys. Um, so I hope you got from that some insight into character during um, a poem, and it's so similar to character in a story, right? There's not a lot of difference there. Um, the difference is just the the format of the poem, and we're pulling stuff from moments as opposed to like complete sentences or paragraphs, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to practice, and we're going to practice with a poem called Border Bus, all right? And it is about immigration which I think you guys will see. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go into our classroom and go into classwork, and you will see two things under unit two. The first one is the poem. It's a CAMI assignment, so you're gonna annotate it there. And then the second one, which I'm gonna talk about quickly, are the three charts. You're gonna pick a character from Border Bus, and you're gonna fill in the three charts of it, okay? There's a little change this time to the steel chart. On the steel chart, um, you still have four columns, right? The quote and the characterization, and then the quote and the characterization. I'm only requiring you to fill out one, okay? If you want some extra points, you can definitely do the second one, but I think one is enough. I think you get the idea at this point. Does that make sense? So you're only gonna do section one. You can do section two for bonus if you would like, okay? And you're just looking into one of these particular characters. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna read Border Bus together. So go ahead and open the Cami assignment. And your screen should look like this. Okay, now this is a little different because we are virtual, but this is a conversation between two people, all right? One is speaking English and one is speaking Spanish. So I'm going to open this up to you guys. Would any of you like to read the voices, one of the voices? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about anybody, online or in person. <laughs> I can try. Is this a little Spanish? Huh? Is this a little Spanish? It's it's half Spanish, half English. Okay. Okay. All right. Hang on. I'm going to mute myself because Taylor is going to read one of the voices. I assume you're reading the English. Yeah. What English is? Oh, okay. Okay. Now, hang on a second. Is there anybody who wants to read the Spanish version? This is a beautiful poem. And if you guys don't read the Spanish version, you're going to get Miss Ritchie's Spanish, which is not very good. <laughs> uh, in a second, I'm hoping there's a brave student who's going to say, I'll read the Spanish. Okay. Well, you guys just remember that you, okay, Joaquin. Coming through for me, right? No, he yeah, said to I'm wait. Gonna, There's English after it. So Taylor said she'd read the English part. It's a conversation. One person speaking Spanish and one person speaking English. So I thought I'd let you guys read it. Um, Taylor's agreed to. I to Taylor has now agreed to read the Spanish part. And Aaliyah Allen will be reading the English part, unless. You can, you can read it off hers. Okay, so I'm going to mute myself and we're gonna let the two of them read it. A final thought, when you're reading poetry, stop at the punctuation, not at the end of the line, okay? Stop at, period. stop at the period or the comma or the question mark. Don't, not necessarily the end of the line. Even though it's written weird, read it like it's a sentence, okay? All right, here we go. 
a donde vamos? Where are we going? <laughs> Speaking English or the guard is going to come. A donde vamos? Okay, where? Okay. You just do the Spanish. Oh. You just do the English. Oh, so, so it's like okay. It's a conversation. Okay. A donde vamos? Oh, I already repeat myself. Hold on. Where are we going? Oh, speaking English or the guard is going to come. Oh, that's me. Oh, speaking English or the guard is going to come. A donde vamos? Where are we going? Speaking English or the guard is going to get us. Hero key. Icamos. But what did we do? Speaking English, come on. Nada más. Si unas pocas. Palabras. I just know a few words. You better figure it out, Hermana. The guard is right there. See the bus driver? Um, tantos días y ni tabia más paro, paro, donde ibamos. So many days and we didn't even know where we were headed. I know where we're going where we always go, to some detention center, to some fingerprinting hall or queue, some warehouse, where, some warehouse, warehouse after warehouse. Um, Pero ya nos investigaron, ya cruzamos, ya nos echaron los federales del bordo but they already questioned us we already crossed over they already grabbed us the border patrol what more do they want we are all we are on the bus now that is all Honduras no hermanas camino nada y donde vamos a dormir where are we going i am telling you i came from honduras we can't we haven't eaten anything and where where wait miss you scroll down <laughs> where are we going to sleep oh I don't want to talk about it. Just tell them that you came from nowhere. I came from nowhere and we crossed the border from nowhere. And now you and me and everybody else here is on a bus, on on a bus to nowhere. You got it? Pero po eso nos vinimos para salir. What is it? Salir? Salir. Salir de la nada. But that's why we came to leave all that nothing behind. Oh, when the bus stops, there will be, there will be more nothing. Is that my part too? Oh, we're here, we're here, Hermana. Ooh, y esas genetes, oh, gentes, quientes, son, que usa, quieren, que siga el camión, no, those people there who are they they don't want the bus to keep going they don't want us to keep going now they are blocking the bus so where do we go what he tarara 47 dias para oh igler aqui no tu falis hermano 45 
vamos Uy, hace y los tenemos como como diez semanas quince nosotros como hace unos como cuatro y um, what about Um, I think it's Jala, Jala, the verduras, verduras, um, here it is, candle food, fruity and dulce, in la chine de mar, me, oye de mar, it is with garden, de los pesos, pesos, Amaran. Amaran. Ihura in California. Piro to Davia no entramas. I Tavida il Bodo esta por delante. It took me 47 days to get here. It wasn't easy, Hermana. 45 days from Honduras with the coyotes that won. With the coyotes that won. What? What? The coyotes that won that, well, you know what they did to Las Chicas. Right there in front of us. So what were we supposed to do? And the trains, the trains, how can I tell you? Hermana, hundreds of us like chickens, like gophers and cages and vegetables riding on trains of thousands. You hear me of thousands and they slid from the rooftops in the deserts of Arizona and Texas, thirst and hunger. Thirst and hunger, two things, thirst and hunger, day after day, Hermana. And now here on the bus of who knows where we are going, Hermana. Listen, I come from Brownsville, where they tied us up, and now in California, but still we're not inside, and still the border lies ahead of us. Uh, I told you to speak in English, even. Un por How you say that? On Turquito, the guard is going to think we are going. We are doing something. People are screaming outside. They want us to push the bus back. Um, pero paro donde les damos hermana por esos ni don le quebraron las piernas a mi padre las penadas matarían. But where do we go, Hermana? That's where that's why I came here. They broke my father's legs. Gangs killed my son. I just want us to be together so many years, Hermana pulled apart. What? Oh, mi madre mi dijo que vas más importante es la libertad, la bondad y la buenos aquí nos aquí con el amor. Sí, aquí nos con el amor. Sí, aquí nos con el amor. Sí, aquí nos con el amor. My mother told me that the most important thing is freedom, kindness, and doing good for others. What are you talking about? I told you to be quiet. Dang, she talking to me. Labrated bien desde mu mientro ale recibi todo el dolo de todo el mundo. El momento en que pregamos es dada de nosotros. Interest 
Chamas en Chamas, seremos libres y en este momento terminamos aquí. What's that? Llenarnos de todo el dolor de todos los tres para libertar libro what is liberarlos liberarlos um hey los mismos go ahead it moves that's why okay freedom comes from deep inside all the pain of the world lives there the second we cleanse that pain from our guts we shall be free in that moment we have to fill ourselves up with all the pain of all beings to free them all of them the guard is coming well now what maybe they'll take us to another detention center we'll eat we'll have a floor a blanket toilets water and each other for a while no somos nada vi venimos de la nada pero estas nada los es todos y la noches de amor pues go vencemos Oh, we are nothing, we come from nothing, but, wait, where did I stop? Oh, but that nothing is everything. If you feed it with love, that is why we will try. We are everything, Hermana, because we come from everything. Wow, that's Spanish beat. Boy, I'll be out of breath. Okay, so thank you to Taylor and Aaliyah for reading that. That was a lot, and I know that that wasn't easy, so I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you guys were able to hear the conversation between their two hermanas or sisters or close friends um, as they are on this bus headed for yet another detention center. And you get a look at why they have left their situation, what they are hoping for, um, and so what I want you to do is I want you to pick one of them and I want you to chart the character. What did we learn about that character through what the character said? Well, true, except her friend keeps telling her, I told you, speak in English, speak in English. What does that tell you about the characters? Why do they feel the need to speak in English? They're in America. This is, they come from Brownsville, that's South Texas. That is here. They're going to a detention center, but why does she keep saying, speak English, speak English, who's coming? That's gonna yell at them. Oh, the, guard. the guard is coming. So what does that tell you about these they're women? Immigrants. They're immigrants, they're scared of the guard and what the guard will do to them. You know, they're, um, there's some fear here, they're a little afraid. Um, and, and so how did we get that? We got that by looking at the way they behave when another character's around. And what does that tell you about the guards? How do the guards probably treat these characters? Yeah. Probably bad if they're scared of them. And the guard seems to treat them badly when they speak Spanish, right? That's why they have this pressure to speak English. You're right, Aaliyah Chandler. So, when we look at the steel chart and we look at the effect on others, we know that when these characters speak Spanish, the guards do something that scares them, right? That's the effect these characters have on the guards, all right? But at the very end, I don't see these characters as being defeated at all. Look at the last lines of the poem. We are everything because we come from everything. If you feed it with love, that is why we will triumph. So these characters' perspective on the world isn't a negative perspective. It's very optimistic. It's very hopeful, right? They, they still believe that even though this guard might mistreat them, a better life lies ahead for them, okay? So this is a good look, I think, at immigrants who often, I feel, are mischaracterized in what we read in news stories in the media and those brief television clips on the border. This, I feel, is much more realistic. It was written by a guy named Juan Felipe um, Herrera. And if you look in our classroom, 
under character and poetry, you've got the three charts and you have this website that you can click on that's going to tell you a lot more about Mr. Herrera, right? He was born in California. He's the son of migrant farmers. He um, talks about his experiences here and you get an idea of who's writing this story. So, you know, he he's somebody who's writing with a voice of authority. He understands um, the immigrant perspective in a way that I, as a 45 year old white teacher could not, okay? So, so think about that and think about how he's trying to get readers like me and you to understand the immigrant perspective. And he's doing that by developing their character. So as you study their character, I want you to think about his purpose for writing this, okay? All right, so we've read the poem. You can go back through and annotate for the characteristics that you find. That'll make filling out those charts so much easier. That's what I would do. I would go back now, I would read, and I would annotate for everything you can involving character. And then I'd fill out the charts. Um, and then you've got the character, steel, and perspective chart. And if you remember our rhetorical triangle, we have Herrera here. He's talking to readers, Americans here, about immigration. What do you think Mr. Herrera wants us to do or think or feel about immigration? He wrote this poem and after reading it, what does he want us to, he wants us to feel bad about immigration? He wants us to understand that it's rough, what else? Does immigration defeat the immigrants? It doesn't? Um, no. It doesn't, right? He wants us to know how I what I'm getting from the poem is how optimistic these immigrants are and how how much they believe America can offer them a better life and how unkind maybe Americans are. <laughs> how how maybe we take that for granted. That's what I'm getting after reading the poem. What are you getting after reading the poem? I mean, I think what I'm thinking is that the reason why I wrote the poem is so that we can, like, sympathize with them, like... Okay. Yeah, because it's not that easy coming from another country to America. I mean, yes, America is a free... Uh, we have, they have... They become citizens, they have rights and everything and all that. But before that, the tough stuff they have to go through and all that before they can actually become American. Yeah. Okay. So we're to sympathize with the immigrants. I cannot spell sympathize to save my life, so sorry, that's the wrong spelling. But we're to sympathize with the immigrants, to be hopeful, to understand the difficulties of immigration. Thank you, Joaquin. I was just adding way too many letters in there. Thank you. Um, to understand the difficulties of immigration. Okay, I think all of those things are true and there's more, all right? So just think about how he develops these characters in order to get that idea across. There's a reason why when we are done reading that poem, we sympathize, we appreciate things a little bit more. And that's because he developed these characters in the way that he did. So I'm gonna stop talking and I'm going to let you guys go back over the poem. The poem is on Cami favor so you can for sure go on there and annotate that is what i would do i would go back i'd annotate and look for character um anything you see that seems significant and then that is what i would use to fill out the charts okay um i am going to mute myself um i will still be here but you do not have to stay on the meeting if you understand the assignment there's no need to burn up your wi-fi so if you understand the assignment, you can go and work on it. If you have questions, stick around. And if you have questions during the assignment and need to come back to the meeting, you can certainly do that as well. Okay, happy Friday.